but it's been a good day. I'm glad to see everybody. So I'm sorry if I smell like a zoo. That's where I've come from. So y'all just ignore me. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's start tonight with Christ arose, and we're gonna have the uh, words on the board. Hold on a minute. In case they're too small to see. Hold on, Trey. In case it's too small to see. It's, um, it's going to be up on the board as Christ arose, but I'm trying to find, I'm looking for the page number, which I should have already, I had it at home, in case you can't see the words. It's going to be on 216. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead, Trey. it is. <laughs> there it is. Brother Mike, would you like to open us up in prayer, please, sir? Amen. And now I'm going to turn it over to Brother Rusty and his special guest.
All right, this is a very special, uh, very special night to, to me. Uh, Emily Crawford has come tonight. She's willing to do a, a demonstration of Bible drill. Now, if you're not familiar with Bible drill, it's a, it's a Southern Baptist program. Uh, and in Alabama, it's very well developed. Uh, the, the youth, of the, have, there's also, there's a children's Bible drill and a youth Bible drill. Emily is youth. She's done children for three years. Actually, she, she started before that because of some st extenuating circumstances. But uh, she's, she does youth. There's also a, a Bible drill for high schoolers and a speakers tournament, which is all involved in that. They do a church drill and then an associational drill. And then the ones that qualify go to regional and then the, one, the youth in high school that qualify get to go to the state drill, which this year is going to be at the end of April. I think it's April 29th. It's the last Saturday in April uh, is when it's going to be. So uh, Emily has, has done well all the way through. She's done her church drill and her associational drill, and uh, so she's qualified to go to the next step. Uh, and she was going to come three weeks ago, and we had the bad weather, and then she was going to come last week, we had to bed with her. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad she's here tonight, and her mom, Stacy, brought her brought her tonight so she could do this. Now, before uh, Emily gets up here, let me explain just a little bit so she didn't have to stand <laughs> for so long. Uh, but there are five categories. I'll be calling, uh, uh, making calls to her from five different categories. One is she's going to look up books in eight seconds, and she's going to uh, look up uh uh, random scriptures. She doesn't know ahead of time what they're going to be. Eight seconds. Uh, then we call the identifying verses drill where I'll read just a clause or a phrase out of a uh, out of a verse and she knows where, she studied it and she knows where it is and she'll find it in eight seconds. And then doctrinal, uh, doctrinal statements. I'll give a doctrinal statement from the Bible and she'll know what verse supports that doctrine, and she'll find that verse. Uh, and then the last one is probably the, is the most challenging, I would say, because it will call it the Bible Answers Verses. But I'll ask a question, and then she has to know, which she does, she knows them all, which uh, verse answers that question. And she'll find it in eight seconds and step out. And when I call on her, uh, she closes the Bible. At this point, she closed the Bible. So those verses have to be actually memorized word for word. Okay. All right. So uh, has anybody ever seen one of these or participated in one of these? Okay. Good. You know, who was that? Aaron Stone, yeah, I don't, I don't remember that name, but we probably, maybe we met somewhere along the line. Twenty years ago, okay. Well, I've only been doing this since 1987, so uh, it's been a, been a while. But uh, anyway, that's great to know. It's great to know. Uh, and COVID hit Bible drill this year, like it hit, or the last two years, like everything else, and so numbers are down all over the state. We we're talking about the other day, but uh, anyway, we're going to continue on with the ones that that God gives us. Okay, so tonight, instead of calling five per category in demonstration, we're just going to do, do two per category. Okay, uh, Emily, are you ready? Okay, and I've asked Emily to uh, to uh, give you the uh, the uh, books of the Bible before we start. So, are you ready? Okay, go ahead. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, and on to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 
2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, read Revelation. Amen. Very good. Okay. Okay. You want to step up? Okay. Here. Could everybody hear okay? Huh? It turns on on the bottom. There's a little switch on the bottom of the microphone. Okay. I thought you were going to do it. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. Uh, could everybody hear her do the books of the Bible okay? Okay, good. All right. Should have gone up there to do that. Okay. Okay, you ready? All right. Uh, uh, attention, uh, present Bible. Exodus. Start. Wow. Okay, number one. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Attention. Present Bible. First Corinthians. Start. Wow. Okay, number two. Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Attention. All right. Very good, Emily. Very good. Outstanding. She found both of those in much less than eight seconds. Okay. All right. Now we'll go to Scripture searching. All right. Uh, you're at attention. Present Bible. Joshua 1, 9. Start. Okay. Number three. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Attention. Very good. Present Bible. Acts 4, 12. Start. Okay. Number four. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no, na for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts four twelve. Attention. Okay. All right. Outstanding, Emily. Now we're going to go to identifying verses. All right. Uh, you had attention. Present Bible. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Start. Okay, number five. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Attention. Present Bible. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. Start. Number six. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Attention. All right. Now we'll go to uh, the doctrinal verses, doctrinal statements. All right, you had attention, present Bible. Education. Start. Uh, number seven. Education. Make me to know your your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Psalm 25, 4, and 5. Attention. Present Bible. Grace.
number eight. In him we have redemption through his blood. Wait, no. Sorry. Grace. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1, 7. Attention. All right, now we'll go to Bible answers verses. All right, you at attention, present Bible. What does God say about alcohol? Start. Close your Bible, please. Number nine. What does God say about alcohol? Wine is a mocker, strong drink, a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Proverbs 21. Attention. Present Bible. What things should I think about? Start. Close your Bible, please. Number 10. What things should I think about? Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is just, whatever is honorable, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Philippians 4, 8. Attention. Yeah. That was great. Great, Emily. Very good. Yeah. You no. okay. okay. All right, Emily, thank you so much. Why don't you stay here with me? And has anybody got any, any questions or comments? How old was he? How old? How old was uh, I am 13. Yeah, I know you're 13. Yeah, yeah. 13. Hey, Chris? How long have you been doing this? We started in January, I believe. Yeah. And then, like, I have... I have been doing Bible drill for five years before this. Should have been doing it for three, but my aunt was teaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the extenuating circumstance. So yeah. I got an extra two years experience. Yeah, yeah, she did. But uh, uh, the children's Bible drill is is different. This youth is a lot more challenging, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot more Very. challenging. Yeah, a lot more challenging. But the children's Bible drill is, is uh, quite, a, quite a program, you know, all over the year. Anybody else? It does. It stays. So yeah, I've had uh, uh, 30, 30 and 40 year old Bible drillers come up to me and quote a verse that they learned in Bible drill. Yeah, and that's that's a great experience. Yeah, great experience. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> you're older than that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Sure. She will. Yeah. We talked about that uh, some. When she quotes, uh, when she comes up here and she quotes scripture, she's preaching. She's preaching right from the word, Brother Mike. Yep. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. could be, could be. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, all right. Do you have, Riley, do you have a question? No? Okay, well, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, for bringing her. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we we sure do we sure do appreciate you giving us the time to do it today. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, do y'all want to stay for a few minutes? Huh? Oh, good. Okay. Great. That's wonderful. That's wonderful news. Okay. Uh. Emily. Emily. I'm sorry. We've got. We've got. We're going to do these. You haven't thought about it. Think about it. Thought, think about it. Let me know. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, Riley, I've got something for you.
Emily can explain explain to you exactly what that is. She knows. Okay. All right. And I've got more if you need more. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this little this little paint card right here has got the Old Testament books on one side categorized and the New Testament on the other side categorized. All all sixty six books. So if anybody would like to have one, you're very welcome. I've got several. All right, that was uh, going over, going over my uh, lesson plan this afternoon, like I always do before we come. And I, I you know, somebody made the comment. I think it was Trey. We were talking on the way in. It's only been two weeks, but it seems like it's been a lot longer since we're here. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Uh, now, how long? How long does God's word last? Uh, but the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. That's 1 Peter 1, 25. And by the way, that's one of her Bible answers verses also. Now last week, uh, uh, this is, uh, my name is Rusty Chastain. This is the sixth session in Genesis, and uh, we're coming to you from Sulphur Springs uh, Baptist Church in Charlottesville, Alabama. Now, last week, we began uh, chapter 4 and went through verse 8. Now, you'll recall we read about the births of Cain and Abel. Also, uh, we read that the two of them brought an offering to the Lord. The scripture doesn't tell us exactly what prompted the offerings, but it does say that Abel brought a sheep of the firstborn of his flock, while Cain offered fruits from the earth. Abel's offering was acceptable to God, but Cain's was not, and we discussed that some. Now, eventually, Cain killed his brother, Abel, and God confronted Cain with his sin, with Cain's sin, and that is where we'll pick up the uh, narrative at uh, verse 9, chapter 4, verse 9. Has anybody got uh, uh, any questions or comments about, uh, about, about what we covered before to kind of bring us up to date? Where we are. Okay? All right. All right. Well, let's start then. Uh, uh, Brother Mike, if you would read uh, Genesis 4, verses 9 through 15, please. Amen. Thank you for reading that. It's a long passage. All right, well, in verse 9, all right, Cain's response to God's question was very similar to Adam's response to God's question, where art thou? You remember that back, uh, back, back earlier uh, in chapter 3. Now, in both cases, God gave them opportunity, Adam and Cain, he gave them opportunity to confess their sin. However, neither one did, but both tried to change the subject. You know, I don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> change the subject. Uh, we all know how to do that. Now, right. Cain's question to God is a good one for us to ask ourselves, however. Are we our brother's keeper? Are we responsible for others? We'll go to, uh, go to 1 Corinthians 13. 
1 Corinthians 13. By the way, by the way does anybody know what uh, the name for 1 Corinthians 13 is? The love chapter. Very good. Brother Don. Okay. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 and 2. I'm reading from the New, from the New King James here. Uh, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become as sounding brass or a tinkling or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, if, if I have not love, I am nothing. I am nothing. Um, at another time, perhaps uh, in the future, we can look at this entire chapter. I'd love to, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, but I'd love to go through the entire chapter. I really would. Uh, but right now, just go to the end of the chapter, verse 13, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, or if you read King James, it says charity. Uh, other translations have love, same thing, same Greek word. Uh, and now by the faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love or charity. If you're reading the King James. Uh, so we do have a responsibility for our brother and for other people, especially within the body of Christ. Especially within the body of Christ. All right. In, uh, uh, anybody got a comment or question? Yes, sir. I think so. Yeah, uh, the Lord gave him a way out, and he wouldn't take it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Yeah, we see that with uh, see that with Judas Iscariot too. Yeah, it's a similar principle. All right, verses ten and twelve. I'm back in Genesis four now. We're through for, through with First Corinthians for now. Verses ten through twelve. Now God is not asking Cain for information. Uh, he does not already have. God knows everything. So when he says, uh, uh, what have you done? He, he knows. He's not asking for information that he doesn't have. God is very aware of what Cain has done. In fact, God expressed his outrage at Cain's deed uh, in, the very next, in the very next sentence there. The voice of your blood cries out to me from the ground. So he knew, he knew what was going on. He was just giving him opportunity to confess his sin, which he did not do. We talked about that before. Uh, now there was a penalty for Cain's sin as there was for Adam's sin. You know, we we, you know, we kind of correlated Adam's response to Cain's response. Well, there was a penalty for Cain's sin as there was for Adam's sin. The penalties or curses were very similar. Now, if you look, just look back at 317, uh, God cursed the ground for Adam's sake. Here in verse 12, 412, Cain is told he wouldn't be able to grow anything. So it's, uh, uh, it's a, a, a stronger curse, I guess, we should, more severe curse I guess, would be a better way to put it. From henceforth, Cain and his descendants would be vagabonds or wanderers, and they would be subject to reliance on others, and they would suffer abuse by others. Suffer abuse by others. Okay. Everybody? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's kind of interesting, but that is that's something we don't know. Yeah, you're right. Well, Good point. That's, that's probably t time constraints. And yeah, and yeah. Who knows? And you know, they live so long, we don't know how many years are passed too. Yeah, a lot of questions, not many answers. <laughs> okay, what it is. All right, in verses 13 and 14 of chapter four, based on what we are given in these verses. 13 and 14, there is no regret or remorse by Cain over the killing of his brother. He's not remorseful about it. Uh, except, as pointed out, guy, you know, what happened to him? You know, what was his uh, punishment going to be, so to speak? Of course, it was the same with his daddy, 
with Adam. There was no asking of forgiveness uh, for doubting God's warning about eating the forbidden fruit. Cain's concern was only about himself. I will now be persecuted. I will now have to be looking over my back constantly, which he did. That was part of the curse that God put, put on him. But he was concerned about how it, how, uh, how it affected him. What can be worse than uh, being hidden from God's face? Nothing. I don't know of anything that could be any worse than that. That's eternal. Uh, go to Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy is the, the, fifth, the fifth book of the law. All right, Deuteronomy 31. Uh, now follow as I read Deuteronomy 31, 14 through 18. All right, then the Lord said to Moses, and just to give you some background, and you may already know, but Deuteronomy is like the second giving of the law, and Moses at this point is preparing the people to go across the Jordan into Canaan. Now he had been, he had taken them through the wilderness for the 40 years, taken them out of Egypt uh, with God's leadership, of course, and now they're ready to go actually into Canaan, and Moses is getting them ready. And then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, the days approach when you must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of meeting that I may inaugurate him. Now Joshua is the one that took over uh, from, uh, uh, from Moses and actually took them into the land of Canaan across, uh, across the, uh, the Jordan. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of meeting. Now the Lord appeared at the tabernacle in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood above the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, you will rest with your fathers, and this people will rise and play the harlot with the gods of the foreigners of the land, where they go to be among them, and they will forsake me and break my covenant which I made with them. So God's telling them, they're going to go over there like I promised them and like I promised you, but they're going to act like the Canaanites. Verse 17. Then my anger shall be aroused against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. Hide my face from them. There's that phrase again. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Have not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face. There it is. Here, hide my face in that day because of all the evil which they have done in that they have turned to other gods, the gods of the Canaanites. The gods of the Canaanites. So uh, apparently Cain thought it, would, thought it it was okay for him to kill Abel, but it wasn't okay for someone to kill him. So, you know, it, shoes on the other foot, you might say. Uh, any, uh, any comments or questions before we go to verse 15? Right. Yes, absolutely we are. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. The Paschal, Paschal Lamb. Yeah. Passover Lamb. All right, well, verse 15, uh, Genesis 4, 15. We're through, we're through the Deuteronomy for now. All right. Now, here is mercy in verse 15. Here is mercy and forgiveness. We have no idea what the mark was, but it must have been effective. It must have been effective. The Bible says nothing about when or how Cain died. He is, uh, he is mentioned in the New Testament three times, uh, and I'd like for us to look at one of them. Go to 1 John. That's towards the end of the Bible. Okay, You can cut back from Revelation and get there a little bit faster. Uh, Revelation, John, 3rd, 2nd, and 1 John. Go to 1 John chapter 3. Now 
and I'm going to read verses 10 through 15. This is 1 John 3, verse, starting at verse 10. Uh, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. I think we talked about that before a few minutes ago. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder, murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Jealousy. Do not marvel, uh, my brethren, if the world hates you. Uh, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This, is, this book was written by the apostle, by the apostle John, probably about 90, about 90 A.D. So what does the, what does the uh, sevenfold vengeance, what does the sevenfold vengeance mean there in verse 15? Sevenfold vengeance. Well, some think that the vengeance would have extended through seven generations of anyone who killed Cain. Mm -hmm. Didn't really say. Now that certainly can't be proven by Scripture, but God's vengeance would have been very devastating, uh, no matter what form it took. It was very devastating. The mark of protection may have been placed on Cain for the advancement of his line of descendants, more than for Cain himself, for his descendants, because his his descendants are still here. Okay. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Apparently, the, the, uh, the yeah. Apparently, the curse continued uh, because uh, it, uh, the trouble that we're having in the Middle East, all the troubles going on in the Middle East, and has for all these centuries, uh, can be traced back to can be traced back to this time in the patriarchal time. Jews are blinded, yes, but if they come to where, uh, you know, saving knowledge of Jesus, the blind's lifted. So yes, well, they're eligible for salvation. I mean, if that's what, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jesus died; uh, his his death was sufficient for everybody. That's right. Good point. And it seems like the curse continued past Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? All right, uh, Pat, would you uh, read uh, uh, Genesis 4, 16 through 24, please? Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built it a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto, unto Enoch was born Irod, and Irod begat Me. I can't pronounce that. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> May Mahuel, yeah. Ma Mahuel begat huh. Mathusiel and Mathusiel beget Lamech, mm -hmm. and Lamech took unto two wives. The man of the one was Adah, and the name of the other Zillah, and Adah bare, bare Jebel. He was the father of such as dwelt in tents, of such as have cattle. Have cattle. And his brother's name was Judah. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zelah, she also bed Torbert Cain, an instructor or of ever 
sacrifice in brass and iron and the sister of Tabukane named Nemoth and Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zelah, hear my voice. Ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man in my wound, wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly, Lamech, seventy and seventyfold. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, for, and I thought you did a great job with the names. I don't know how to pronounce them either. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, it's just, it's, a, it's kind of a guess, you know. Yeah. Uh, maybe if you're a Hebrew scholar, you could do it, you know, but, but I'm not. And so, anyway, but thank you so much. All right, in verses 16 through 18. Now, obviously, no one can escape the omnipresence of Creator God. Omnipresence just means present everywhere. No one can escape the omnipresence of Creator God. The meaning of this verse is that Cain didn't want to have anything to do with God. He wanted to go his own way. Many years later, there was a prophet named Jonah who wanted to do the same thing. Daniel, uh, the last of the five major uh, prophet books, uh, 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 well, I was uh, say that just to how, show you how to get to Jonah. Uh, if you know where Daniel is, uh, from Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Omadai, and then uh, Jonah. So if you go to Jonah, uh, chapter 1, And uh, I think everybody's familiar somewhat to, with the story of Jonah. But in uh, Jonah 1, chapter 1, verse 3, But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So his, his goal was to get away from the Lord. In fact, he went as far as he could possibly go at that time. He was on the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea where Israel is located and he wanted to go to Tarshish which was in Spain on the western end of the Mediterranean Sea. He wanted to go as far as he had to go. Uh, he went the opposite direction of where God told him to go. He told him to go to Nineveh which would be even to the east of where he was. Now things didn't work out well for Jonah uh, in uh, things didn't work out well for Cain. I, sus I suspect we don't we don't really have that wording, but uh, uh, but uh, I suspect it didn't work out well for Cain either. And no one knows exactly where Nod was or is, except it was to the east of Eden. Eden we talked about was probably in the Mesopotamian Valley, there to the east of uh, where Israel is located now. As discussed earlier, Eden was very likely in the Mesopotamian Valley. That land is basically today's Iraq. So to, to relate it to today's, basically today's Iraq. So to the east would be today's Iran. Iraq and then Iran. Now what really complicates all this is that we, noth we know nothing about pre-deluge or pre-flood geography. I think it's interesting that Cain's grandson... Uh, in verse 18 was I-R-A-D I which I, I pronounce I-R-A-D which is pretty close to Iraq and Iran I-R-A-Q and I-R-A-N now be that as it may I want to go forward uh, many years to Genesis 25 so uh, if you turn in your Bibles to Genesis 25 we're through with Jonah Okay, Genesis 25 Genesis 25, uh, and we'll cover this in more detail, of course, when we get to Genesis 25. It'll be that's that's a ways off, but for now, look at uh, look at verse one, Genesis 25, one. It says Abraham, uh, and you remember Abraham, uh, the first of the patriarchs. Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And you're saying, well, I thought I thought his wife was Sarai. Well, it was. But Sarai died, and Abraham remarried, 
and he had uh, more uh, children uh, at that uh, at that time. Uh, now we won't read all the names right now, but you probably recognize the name Midian if you look at for there in verse two. And she bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian. You might be familiar with that name, Midian. The Midianites were perpetual thorns in the side uh, of the Israelites throughout the Old Testament, uh, and their descendants remain enemies of Israel today. Uh, now, Follow, is, if you will, as I read 5 and 6, uh, and this is Genesis 25, 5 and 6. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. He was the son of promise. But Abraham gave gifts to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had. And while he, Abraham, was still living, he sent them eastward, away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. So eastward, the country of the east, this really relates to what we're talking about in the, in the land of Nod. Because to the east of Israel is where most of their enemies are. I mean, they have enemies all over the world, but most of them are right there in that land, in that land. So Father Abraham sent all the boys to the east, to the east of Canaan. And to me, this verse is very clear and cannot be misunderstood. Adam to Cain to Enoch to Irad and so forth to Lamech is one family line. When we get to the genealogy of chapter 5 uh, next week, or, or the next week, we'll be reading another line from Adam. Yes, some of the names are very similar and even the same, but the two lines are clearly separate. And they're, not, they're not mixed, and we'll explain. We'll go into that a little bit more later on. Okay. All right, any, uh, any comments? I need to finish up. We need to finish up right now. Okay. Uh, Give me about two minutes so we can do that. All right, verses 19 through 25, 19 through 24, we've already been read. Now, being in the way of Cain, that is mentioned in the next last book of the Bible in Jude, and we're not going to go there tonight, uh, but it's uh, but being in the way of Cain is mentioned in Jude 11. Jude 11, uh, uh, the 11th verse, Lamech was the first bigamist. He had two wives. It was in blatant violation of Genesis 1.27 and Genesis 2.24, which we've already covered. Jabal was a nomad and dealt in cattle or livestock. Your translation may say livestock. Jubal, Jubal uh, was uh, the, the inventor of strained and wind instruments. Tubal Cain was the first metallurgist. Uh, it worked in ore, uh, worked in ore and uh, iron and metals. Now, the speech in 23 and 24 is really odd uh, to me. However, it, it illustrates arrogance, boastfulness, and self-pride. Lamech said he was the top dog around here. If needed, he could exact 11 times more vengeance than God. He said if Cain's going to be venge- uh, 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 avenged seven times, then Lamech would do it 77 times or 70 times. Uh, so so his attitude was like a lot like we see today. Why did he need God? Why do I need God if I can do this? Do you know anybody like that? Sure, we all do. Now what does God say about such an attitude? Uh, uh, Kent, if you have Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, would you read that for us, please? These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth with wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Amen. And what was the first one? A proud look. Pride that gets everybody in trouble, and Lamech certainly illustrates that. All right, the last two verses, twenty-five and twenty-six. Now, this is son number three. He is very important because Seth means appointed, and to Eve, Seth was appointed to replace Abel, the son whom Cain had slain. And to every sinner, 
which includes all of us, Seth's line was appointed to culminate in Jesus Christ. Uh, now, if, if we had time, we'd go to the genealogy in Luke and we'd look at it, but we'll do that another time. Uh, but that's why Seth is so important. Jesus Christ is in the line of Seth. Going back to Adam. Okay. Any... Uh, No, we need, that's right. Good point. That's a good point. There is a Lamech, but that, but he's a different one. He comes. He'll come up later on, before the before the what flood. The, yeah. The name Methuselah means. What's that? When he dies, it comes. When he dies, it comes. I've always had a picture of him laying in his tent when the first drops of rain begin to fall. Yeah, could be. Could be. He lived a long time. I think until the flood. Yeah. It's a picture of God's mercy. Mm hmm. For sure. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? Sorry, I went a little long, Brother Don. <laughs>